in the second episode of Maya's Great Adventure, we get into the preparations and the journey itself as Maya canoes down the Mackenzie River with her family. So, um, before, I mean, you don't just go on a trip like this. So there needs to be a lot of uh, preparation. So what, what kind of preparation did you have to do? And was it a bit of an eye-opener? I have to say it was an eye-opener. It was like all the other trips we'd done had been roughly three or four days and we'd prepare by lining things up in piles. We used to call them daddy piles um, because dad used to line things up um, in order of, you know, what we'd need and we'd group it all together. And it was like one of those trips, but on a massive scale. I remember our garden just being full of piles of equipment that we'd wrap up and store and we'd go over and over and over, you know, exactly what each thing was, a lot of prep behind it. I remember being able to pack my own stuff, so my own clothes. Um, I'd have to think about exactly what I'd need and then I'd be so proud of my piles and then dad would come upstairs and say, ah, have you thought about this? No, I haven't thought about this and we'd have to go back. It was definitely a lot of prep work. Um, but again, as a 13 year old being so young, it, it was more exciting than daunting, I think. And having done, you know, with the Sea Scouts and other things like that, just having had that responsibility of trying to think about what you need and plan ahead and you know think about what could go wrong it's it, it's useful for a trip like that <laughs> tell me some of the, the the bits of kit the main bits of kit that you needed to take for such an expedition Ooh, well we had the tent that uh, a, a teepee the boats we hired in canada and um, they were the same as the boats we had here but obviously you can't ship a two-person canoe halfway up the world because that's just too expensive so we shipped everything in barrels um and i think the most most important bit of equipment would probably have been the paddles um life jackets point, well pointy aids tent the food we got up there we took a bit of dry rations um obviously the firearms uh stuff like flares maps I think that's the basics. And then everything else, everything from, you know, pencils to write on maps to first aid kits as long as your arm. They were huge. Um, yeah, really little nitty gritty things that you don't think about until you have to put it all together. Or you're halfway through the trip and you realise you've forgotten it. <laughs> um, I'm intrigued, you said, and obviously the firearms. <laughs> What, what do you need firearms for? You're 13. <laughs> Personally, I mean, we had um, a rifle and a shotgun with us because obviously, you know, we were in bear country. There are big bears. At that time of the year, they're small bears, they're black bears. Um, they're usually young cubs that have just left their parents and they're curious and they've never seen people before. So, you know, they might trundle along and smell something that smells quite good and quite different and, you know, they'll try and get their nose in. Um, so to scare away the, away the bears, our first line of defense was mothballs. Um, I, I, I don't know if people would be familiar with mothballs. They smell disgusting. They linger in smell and we had to take them all with us down this trip and we, we'd put them out on the barrels and the tent each night so that when the bears came, they'd smell the mothballs and they'd run away. And then we had our second line of defense Actually, no, our first line of defense would have been me because I was incredibly loud. So when we get onto the beach, I just run around and, you know, talk extremely loudly and scare everything that was living away. Then we had the mothballs. We had very pistols. Um, if you saw a bear, big bang, big spark, bear got scared, bear runs away. Our last line of defense would have been the firearms. The first shot would have been a warning shot if the bear is coming towards you. So the bear feels threatened and scared and it runs away. And the very, very last resort, and this is, you know, the bear's charging at you. It's incredibly hungry. It will eat you. It's about to kill your child. You would unfortunately have to shoot the bear. But we never had to do that. We never even had to fire a berry pistol. I think they had the loudest bear scarer <laughs> myself on the beach. But it's just a precaution. Um, especially when you're traveling through the wilderness, you never want to use it. You never have to use it, but having in there is important. So um, you had lots of kit to uh, plan to take. Uh, once you were on the expedition, 
was there a piece of kit that you thought, oh no, we forgot this very thing? No, we didn't really forget anything that I can remember. We did collect a few items on the way. I remember we, the food up north is incredibly expensive and we'd stop you know, at a settlement every now and again to pick up small bits and pieces. And I remember uh, we, we had to rack up quite a large bill for our food because we were stopping in our main settlement halfway through Norman Wells, stock up our barrels so that we could proceed on without having to spend more money on the trip. Um, and the owner of the store came out and thanked us for spending money in his store and gave us this vase. And it was a hideous vase. It was like something out of the 1950s and it was green, <laughs> yellow and brown. But it was a china vase in a brown cardboard box. And dad was like, nope, we, we can't keep it. We can't take it down the river. It, we're gonna have to give it to someone. We'll just give it to someone. But Hannah and I decided that we would take control of the vase and we paddled it halfway down the river, 500 miles on down the river. And uh, it came home with us and it's now sitting in our living room. <laughs> Much to my parents' amusement, it's still in the living room. Um, but yeah, it's it really still just is. as hideous. Still just as hideous. It's <laughs> but something I will treasure forever. So we didn't forget anything, but we certainly picked up some interesting things on the way.